Hello and welcome to the Sunday Guardian show by Joyita Basu. I'm Joyita Basu, the editor of the Sunday Guardian. Today I have a very special guest on my show, Professor Madhav Nalapat. Uh, he is the editorial director of the Sunday Guardian and a geopolitical expert. Today we are going to discuss about Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi's visit to Russia about the Bonhomme. It was seen in Moscow and is being seen in Moscow. And how is it going to affect India's uh, relations with the United States? The U.S. has already talked about, we are watching it. Okay, so Professor Nalapat, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Joyta. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Professor Nalapat, so what do you think uh, is the message that is going out about uh, Mr. Modi's visit to Moscow? Why is there so much? Because generally we have not seen this kind of hype over a visit of either Mr. Putin or Mr. Uh, to New Delhi or Mr. Modi to Moscow. What explains the hype and how do you think the Western world in particular is uh, reacting to it or will react to it? Because Mr. Uh, Zelensky has, is go, uh, has gone totally nuts. He's furious. Well, uh, I'd like to say that uh, the Western world, those who have been targeting India for a long time, will use any opportunity, any excuse to target India for the simple reason that either because they are unable to understand that the world has changed or because they basically want to help a certain country, the People's Republic of China, uh, by, by, by basically demonizing India. Whatever the reason, most, almost certain, most of them is the first motivation. There are some of them who are very pro-China, very uh, clearly pro-China. And if you trace the family linkages, the amount of ch Chinese money through one means or the other that has gone into some of their businesses, you can understand why. Uh, money is a, has been a very primary force. Barring that, I would like to say the geopolitical situation now firmly backs India. And from, that is why you're seeing India uh, not really getting into the kind of sanctions that were threatened by the same, I mean, en uh, enemies of India, if I may say so. Now, the tragedy is that many governments in Yo Europe and in, in North America, of course, there is one government that's completely, if I may say so, very, very friendly to China. And it's been so since the father uh, of the present prime minister, Justin Trudeau, that's Canada. As far as the United States is concerned, I think Joe Biden had some wonderful years in the US Senate. And those were years when Russia was the enemy. Cold War 1.2. I don't think that he has made the transition to Cold War 2.0 yet fully, although he's showing signs of it. Certainly, Department of Defense has, the Pentagon has, State Department definitely has not. Both uh, uh, Blinken, and I'm sorry to say, in the national security establishment in the United States, you look at the national security establishment, the key players, you will find many of them who are very close to basically what I have long called sino wahhabi interests. And from that point of view, though these interests are come, have come together. And they want to basically ensure that uh, the West continues to focus on Russia and avoids the real threat that China is now posing. So from that point of view, uh, several of these establishments may not be very happy with this visit, but more and more the public in many of these countries is frankly understanding the situation. Yes, everybody combined against uh, Marine Le Pen, and she didn't get very much. But the fact of the matter is, of course, that the presidential election is quite another matter altogether. It's two years down the line. As far as Scholz is concerned, he's in very bad trouble. Rishi Sunak had got into trouble and Labour uh, uh, came to power. It's interesting that Nigel Farage uh, has done better than Conservatives in several seats. So I'd like to say that the that the wind is shifting, that people in more and more uh, parts of Europe, 
are beginning to understand it's not Cold War 2.0. It's and this is something that Prime Minister Modi understands from the very beginning. Just a minute, Mojaita. He signed the quadrilateral security dialogue. He reinvigorated. He signed the four foundation agreements with the United States. Why? Because he understands the reality of Cold War 2.0, and he has understood it since 2014. Going to Russia, in the let me put in the context of that of Cold War 2.0. During Cold War 1.0, guess which two countries were aligned with each other against China? The strongest of alignment. Both countries that worked very hard to demolish the USSR. One was the United States, the other was China. Frankly, an intelligent, geopolitical, rational, and strategist would have said it makes sense to ensure that this time around, it's the Russians that align with the uh, with the group that is opposed to Chinese expansionism, and uh, they don't have they don't tie up with China. Today, what the West has done is to draw China and the U.S. In, uh, I mean, and the West very close together. So China is having it both ways. It's doing very well vis-a-vis with the Europe and the and the U.S. is doing very well vis-a-vis Russia because of the default situation created by the full attack by the United States on Russia on Ukraine. Today, it's not Ukraine that's important. Ukraine is important, and Belarus only to Russian security. And, and then they're creating this myth that Putin wants to grab the whole of Europe, first the whole of Ukraine. That's utter nonsense. Putin wanted that bit of territory that he's already got. I'm very certain he'll be happy to do a ceasefire uh, uh, if Ukraine agrees not to join NATO. And the reason for that, Joyta, is Ukraine in join, joining NATO. The Ukrainians are run by Russian, Russian Russophobics. They will immediately launch another war with Russia and bring NATO into the war. So it will be a disaster for NATO, disaster for Ukraine, disaster for the whole world. That's why uh, NATO should not ever admit Ukraine. Given that, I do believe the present uh, line of control is acceptable to Russia. And Prime Minister Modi has been saying right from the last, I would say, two years, that this is what we need, an immediate ceasefire. And I'm sure that message, and that message actually has been publicly repeated. That message yeah. to President publicly repeated. So he has shown he understands the realities of Cold War 2.0. He knows where the theater is, is the Indo-Pacific. His focus is on the Indo-Pacific, and it's not Russia anymore. The, the The focus on Russia is by countries that just don't get the logic of the new Cold War. Joyita. So the thing is, you see, in terms of India's relationship with the rest of the world, with the world, uh, how is Russia still important, given that at the same time that India is now a strategic partner of the US also, a major defense partner. So how does that sit and is in terms of at a time when we are trying to make in India, we are trying to diversify our sourcing of uh, material, uh, arms and equipment. How is Russia still so important for India to merit a visit like this? Joyta, you will name the two reasons why. As you know, India and Russia are looking at trade uh, in their own currencies. President Putin as a good friend of India, if he agrees to that, then it brings up the situation by which the Russians can invest that surplus in India, buying Indian products and Russian investment in India. Prime Minister Modi would welcome Russian investment in India. Uh, he would certainly welcome more Russian buying of Indian products under mm -hmm. Atmanirbhar. The country that will oppose it tooth and nail is China. And this is the country that is really preventing a true rupee-ruble deal. They don't want to have that deal signed. And it's not being signed despite Russia knowing. India was the only country in the world that basically entered into a, a, a pact with the, with the Russian Federation in which rubles were exchanged 
for in, in exchange for past debt at a very very favorable rate they were worthless in the market we could have paid it in worthless rubles just forgotten about it like almost every other country did instead about 12 billion dollars at that point in time i'm talking about 1993 93 it's a lot of money it's a lot of money even now it comes to many times that today india showed its goodwill so i see no reason why russia will hesitate to uh, do a rupee ruble uh, trade deal completely 100% not relying on any other currency there's some pressure on the chinese of the chinese side please ask them to go in for rmb yuan well that's ridiculous india doesn't want to go in for rmb yuan it's now using the uae dirham but the reality is rupee ruble is much more sensible and that is something which i'm sure is on the top of the prime minister's mind the imbalance in trade and the need to ensure more trade in rupees and rubles and more investment by each country in the other especially by russian uh, co- the uh, companies in india using their rupee assets india is a good is a gold mine for investors so many international investors are looking at india now that prime minister modi has come back and i think russia would do well to do that as well and let's hope now india prime minister modi has stood up to pressure from from the us and as you said has made this visit i think it's time president putin stands up to pressure from china and goes ahead with the rupee ruble deal and ensuring that uh, you have a lot of russian investment in india which frankly a lot of russians would welcome secondly joita a lot of chinese we are talking about 6 to 7 million chinese possibly much more have over the last just 10 years gone on the other side of the border and have settled in russia marrying chinese women i mean russian women and as soon as they become permanent uh, citizens they divorce the russian wives and they marry chinese women now the chinese have been therefore taking over russian land by stealth through their people i think rather than china it's better to have indian uh, immigration to russia indian settlements in russia and russia can be a tremendous destination for in for indian uh, people to go to the us is a wonderful destination other countries have been a wonderful destination russia would be probably much bigger in potential than either the us or the uk if russia were to welcome indian uh, immigration again this is something that would be very unwelcome to china but i think president putin is his own master and i think frankly he will do what's best for russia and from that point of view rather than slowly be gobbled up by china through its people uh, infiltrating there inject you know having their own people settle there and going all over the country buying up property they'd much rather have indians settling there because historically india has always been a friend of russia including today under modi yeah but i have a question here the thing is you see i mean so there is this so given russia's current economic situation given what has been happening in the world what we are witnessing is a firm alliance between russia and china is it possible for india to overcome the china barrier and uh develop or take india uh, china uh, india russia relations further or are we hoping for too much well i'd like to say that i don't think president xi is very happy with the fact that prime minister modi was given the st- same state honors that uh, president xi got from the arrival of the deputy prime minister at the airport from his accompanying prime minister modi from the the dinner at putin's uh, dacha uh, all that exactly similar to what was done in the case of president xi he won't be liking that as i said putin is his own master he will make up his own mind modi is his own master he will make up his own mind he is not going to be dragged into some war in europe or the atlantic because shoals biden macron and others 
want him to. And by the way, they're all paying a very steep price for it. Macron is toast. Scholz is uh, heading towards being toast. And so, in my view, is Biden. And the main reason is their concentration of focus on Russia. And they're ignoring the threat from China. They're all living in the past. And their populations are living in the present. So I think, I had said long back, that any in 2022 itself, any Western politician <coughs> who emphasizes his Ukraine war and Russia at the expense of China and the Indo-Pacific is going to do very badly. They've all started doing very badly. Rishi Sunak was the latest uh, casualty of that. So mm -hmm. the Labour government should have pursued the same policy of just showering money on Ukraine. It will be no different for Labour. I don't think Starmer is going to be as, uh, if I may say so, uh, as careless as the Conservative government was in just throwing money at Ukraine to fight Russia. Right. The, uh, the enemy is China. So, yes, I do believe that <coughs> already this visit has pushed relations to a very high level. A friend hmm. is shown in bad times, Joita. During good times, everybody is a friend of ours. During bad times, how many of those people remained with us? Very few. India has remained with Putin during the worst of his times, which is now. And that is changing. In the West, politicians are coming to power one by one who are skeptics of the Ukraine war. Even Meloni, in my view, privately is skeptical. And possibly Italy will be the first member of the G7 to say openly, it's time we, we concentrate on a ceasefire. Because that is what we need. Prime Minister Modi has been talking about it for two years. We want an immediate ceasefire. And Prime Minister Modi has been saying that publicly, including this time to President Putin. Should I mean, President Putin, I'm sure, is agreeable to that. It will puncture this nonsense that Russia wants the whole of Ukraine. Russia wants to conquer the whole of Europe, with which this entire war machine is being funded by people who are stuck in Cold War 1.2 when the threat is now coming from China and more and more of their countrymen and countrywomen understand the, where the threat is coming from, even if they don't. Thank you. Uh, I think our time is over. Thank you for this short but very, very illuminating discussion on uh, Russia and what is happening in India's place in Russia and Russia's place in India's uh, geopolitical uh, views and basically privately as you said it's a lot about it is actually about india russia trade thank you professor for this show and thank you viewers for watching this